Hi, I'm Christian Brindle, and welcome to the Everything Medicare Podcast. What's up, everything Medicare Podcast Nation? This is Christian Brindle, wherever you are or however you might be listening to me today. Thank you so much for taking the time. This is episode 189 of the Everything Medicare Podcast. As we close in on 200 episodes, um, I, I have a very, very special guest with me here today. I have somebody who's um, really kind of a celebrity in the Medicare world. You know, he's got a really prominent YouTube channel. He's someone that I've kind of watched from afar for a long time. And um, I have Medicare Bob here with me today. Um, <laughs> Bob, thank you for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you, man. I love your energy, man. And I, I love your podcast. And, and I like all the focus you bring to agents and the resources that you provide for everybody, man. It's really cool. Well, thank you. Thank you. I mean, you know, um, when, I, when I think about you, I think of somebody that, you know, provides so much value for the consumers, but also for the agents at the same time. And so I thought we could kind of tackle this, a, you know, a couple of different ways. But um, for anybody that doesn't know who you are, your story, um, talk a little bit about your story, how you got to where you are today, how you got into the business. Yeah, no problem. So I grew up, uh, my father was an entrepreneur. Uh, he was in the mortgage banking business. So I lived in about 13 different states during elementary school. And I was born in California and uh, we moved over. We lived in hotels and stuff because it was my dad's job to go open up correspondent mortgage banks. So basically like branches. Mm -hmm. So we would live places for like three months or six months and we'd move around quite a bit. Yeah. And uh, we, we were in Minnesota when I was like in second grade and my mom had four kids and putting all the layers and stuff and dealing with the winters in Minnesota. My mom basically told my dad, we're moving somewhere warm and we're not moving ever again. <laughs> so uh, we ended up moving to Orlando, Florida for a couple of years. And then uh, I finished elementary school and finished the rest of my schooling in the Tampa Bay area uh, of, of Florida. And uh, so I grew up with an entrepreneur dad and uh, I really, really, really appreciate him. Um, I have a twin brother who's a very successful attorney. Uh, he actually has su sues insurance companies, so we have both sides covered. <laughs> and um, he's very successful and does a really good job. And I think that really is from our dad. You know, my dad was never the type of guy that said, I have to go to work. You know, it was always, I get to go to work. You know, I'm going to the office. You know, it was 10 hours yeah. a day, 11 hours a day. It was never, my dad was always working. And so to see him, you know, as I got older, it was, if you're going to see dad, you, unless you're at a sporting event, it's going to be, you better go to the office because otherwise yeah. you're not going to see him for the weekend. So, um, you know, we would go with him and uh, I would help him, you know, back then they would, uh, I, was, I did a lot of data input from the time I was 10, 12, 13, 14 years old, just typing stuff into the computer for him. I didn't know this now, but he was actually building funnels before they were called funnels. Uh, he was building, he advertised to mortgage brokers because he was a bank. And so we were building fax lists that we would fax the brokers with our programs. Wow. So I would go and just type you know, hundreds of, of numbers just for lunch and just to hang out with him was really the, the motivation. So I really think that um, that was cool and, and learning from him. And, and when I was, I graduated high school at 18, did college at night and uh, worked for him from the time I was 18. And actually when I was 14, I was answering phones for him and I had a voice changer uh, to make my voice sound oh, deep. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my dad taught me rules do not apply. <laughs> you know, he just taught me, you know, you can do what you want to do as long as you work hard and, and get a little bit lucky and, and invest and bet on yourself. And so um, I had a voice changer working for him when I first started with him in the summer, just answering phones and doing transfers and um, stuff like that. But it just, you know, I was in that office environment growing up, which I thought was cool, showing that it can be done. Um, so then uh, when I was 18, I, I, my brother went to, to college full time and went to law school. I went to college at night, but I wanted to work with him. And uh, so I was working for him and I started at the bottom and uh, worked my way up. I was like 21 years old, three years later and uh, very successful in mortgage banking. And I was going to have my own branch and I was going to be a multimillionaire by the time I was 25. Like that was my, my life track. Yeah. And then uh, 2008 happened. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah. basically the, just all the bad credit and stuff that was going on and the properties were selling for way more than they were worth. And so you yeah. guys all know about the credit crisis. So I, uh, I, I had a, quite a bit of money saved. I mean, I did pretty well. So I was looking, uh, I kind of, 
at the time I was getting married and stuff. So I took about six to eight months and started a couple different businesses that, that both failed, um, but learned a lot. And, um, and then finally I was starting to run out of money. <laughs> and, uh, so I was uh, looking at getting into insurance. And so I got my insurance license and uh, my brother-in-law told me, Hey, there's this really high pressure sales job, something, something about Medicare, uh, for a company called transact. And I think you'd be good at it. Now, full disclosure that I found out later, those call centers, what they do is they just, they pay you to refer people to come work for them. So he got paid like a, if I, if he asked me to come work there as an employee, then if I stayed 90 days, he got like 150 bucks. So that's really all the only reason why he told me about the job. <laughs> so, uh, I go interview, interview for the job. Um, they did not want to hire me at first. Uh, they said I, I didn't have any sales experience because my resume was, you know, VP of operations and all this. And, um, but at the end of the day, I really was a salesperson. And so, uh, the first the HR person didn't want to hire me. And I heard him say that to this new sales director they hired, who now I'm really good friends with, uh, this guy, Ryan. And, uh, he told him, you know, you can interview this kid, but you're not going to like him. He doesn't have any sales experience. So as soon as I went to his office, I like sat down cause I needed this job. It was 17 an hour. And I was like, you know, I need money. And I, and I told him, I was like, listen, I can sell like, <laughs> trust me, I can do this. And, um, and so uh, I met with him and he really, I found out now they're going to hire just about anybody who can talk, <laughs> you know, and give them a shot. And so, um, so he ended up hiring me and, uh, at, at transact. And when you interviewed there at the time, it was a nice office in the front. You didn't really see behind the curtain. <laughs> and so when I went yeah. in for training, I saw behind the curtain and it was 500 people sitting in cubicles with headsets. Oof. And so I remember yeah. telling my wife, Oh, I won't be here longer than three months. I'll kill myself. Like I'm not, I'm above being a telemarketer, right? Like that's not what, no, that's not what I'm going to do. Yeah. Ended up loving it. Uh, I was the best at it instantly. I mean, my first three weeks, I did 66 sales. Um, I became, uh, so what they, they were one of the first people to have a, their mutual Mahalas pilot e-app system. So it wasn't the e-app system we have now, which is nice and great. <laughs> uh, it was very different. Um, and we were one of the first people selling over the phone. And uh, our competition was really only local agents because there wasn't other call centers really doing it. Right. Um, and so I worked there and uh, I was Transact's top agent for three years. Uh, selling, I, was mutual, I sold about 1,000 to 1,200 policies a year, each year for wow. three years. And um, I loved it. I mean, I loved that job for me coming from an entrepreneur background, it was almost like, uh, I compared it to when LeBron and D Wade and Bosch went to Miami yeah. and it was just fun, you know, and, and winning. Um, for me, I, I, you know, I was still a young guy, but I knew what it took to run a business because I've seen it my whole life. And, um, so for me, it was like a vacation. I didn't have any bills. It was, I got to come in at, to, at the time I came in at 12, worked till nine. And when I left, I never thought about work. It was, I'm out. And so I knew, you know, what it took, but I was just really enjoying myself. And, um, you know, people, other agents and stuff and were like, oh, you know how much money you're making them and this and that. And I didn't care. I was making 140 grand a year. I was back to making good money. I was, mm -hmm. I was really happy. And, um, but then I kind of got the bug, you know, and, uh, the med sub conference was in Miami, which I'm in Tampa. So it's, you know, it's a five hour drive or whatever. I didn't really have it, you know, so if you're a young guy and you're making 140 grand a year and you're married and you just had your first kid, you buy a house, you're spending about 150 a year. <laughs> you right, know, it's right. it, just because it's, it's just, at least I was, I mean, I can speak for me. I was, I was, as I was getting it, I'm spending it, you know, I'm thinking it's, it's a lot of money and, and, and I'm thinking I'm only going to make more. Um, and so, you know, I, I was happy doing that, but I, I really wanted to learn more about the business. So I went down, uh, I spent my own money to go, which at the time seemed like a lot of money to go to the med sub conference. And, uh, I actually had the, the balls to ask transact to pay for me to go. <laughs> and yeah. of course they said no, <laughs> like, you know, they didn't really want me to go. Um, but I still took the, that, that day off cause it's a weekend or whatever I think. And so I went and drove down there and, um, again, I thought it was a lot of money to pay for the hotel and stuff, you know, at the time, but I did it and, uh, I met, um, just learned and I was like, okay, wow, this is really cool. You know, the, the, it just learned. I didn't know, you know, in the Tampa area, you know, you, you come from usually two trees, you come from a, an Amerilife tree, which is more of a face to face broker or your contractor or not a contractor, but you're selling contracts, you know, uh, those, those marketers that call you all the time to try to get you a Heartland contract or mutual yeah. contract. So there's that tree of people, which I have some good friends that came from that tree and are very successful. Um, or you kind of have the transact tree, um, which is different. Like, you know, you, you didn't really come from, you have more of a sales, you, you were a salesperson, not really a contracting marketing person. Um, so I just knew how to sell Medicare. That was what I knew. And so I, I didn't know what an FMO was. I didn't know anything when I went down there. 
I didn't know what those terms. And so I was, I ate everything up. You know, I went to every single, I like, I was by myself. I was just really gobbling every happy hour up, every uh, class up, everything. And I, I got back. And um, so about, that was, I lasted another about five months at where I was at a transact, which I still love transact, have a great relationship with them. And they were good, always good to me. Um, but uh, I remember I was just like, you know, man, I really think I need to go try this on my own. I always knew I could go try it. And if it didn't work, as long as I left the right way, I could go back. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember I was with my, my twin brother. I mentioned him and I were at the gym and I kept talking about doing it for like four months. So finally, you know, he's just sick of me talking about it and being brothers, you know, he's like, dude, just, so I remember pulling up my driveway and I'll never forget this. I'm in my driveway and I'm like, man, I got to do this. And uh, now my wife's six months pregnant with our second son. So I have, I have a one and a half year old and she's six months pregnant with my second son. And uh, I said, man, I, my brother's name's Larry. I was like, Larry, I got, I really think I got to do this. And, um, and he looked at me over and I'll never forget it. And uh, he looked at me and said, you know, Bob, you're not that smart, man. If you think this is your chance to be a millionaire, <laughs> you, you got to take it. And, uh, you know, he was somewhat being sarcastic, but just, you know, bet on yourself. You know, if you're going right. to do it, shut up or put up. I'm sick of hearing about you thinking about doing it. So yeah, I, um, ended up, uh, walking in that night. That was a Thursday night. And, um, my, my wife's family has a timeshare down in Fort Myers, Sanibel Island. And we go every year and this was in June and, uh, the first week of June. And uh, I told my wife, Hey, I'm not going to go with you uh, on vacation. I'm going to quit tomorrow. Like I woke her up to tell her this. <laughs> and my wife just cried. You know, I mean, I was make, I'd make, make it 140,000 a year. We just bought a house. We have a one and a half year old, six yeah. month old. She's like, sure. why? Yeah. Now's not the time to do that, you know, and, and this and that. And, and, and she's like, you know, now's not the right time. And, and I knew enough about business. It's just, there's never the best time. There's never the right time to start a business. There's never the right time to have a kid. You know, if you wait for the right time to have a kid, you're going to wait forever. Like, you know, those, and right. some people do, and that's fine. I mean, you're a great planner, but you know, if you wait to, well, let's, let's be married for three years. Okay. Well, let's, let's go both get our jobs. Oh, I'm up for a promotion. Like if you just wait, and there's no perfect time to do a lot of things. Right. And so I was like, you know what? And I told him, I you know, I said, I have a great relationship with everybody there. If I leave, I'll be able to go back. And so, um, I remember, you know, I was still a young guy and, and I went in and I was, you know, I was, uh, emotionally excited, but you know, scared, you know, even just quitting, you know, this was, uh, just, I've never, I'm not a quitter. So I did, I've never done that before. And so I walked in, met with them and they kind of really didn't know how to take, take it, take it at first. Like, well, usually in the call center, if someone gets fired or quit, like you get ex, uh, escorted off the premises. Like, you know, you have a box at your cubicle and you're being walked yeah. out. <laughs> um, but you know, I had a great relationship. Like I was, I was a different top producer, man. You know, um, I wasn't an asshole. I don't know if I can cuss on your podcast, but sure, <laughs> uh, I do. I just, I, I wasn't an asshole. You know what I mean? Like I would, um, you know, all the new agents would be like, man, cause I was doing 75 a month out of annual enrollment. And then, and the, the goal was 25. Yeah. So just you know, killing it. Yeah. There's only a couple, one other person that was in the sixties and she's one of my best friends. She's awesome. Um, but everybody else, you know, maybe some people hit the forties, but, but the expectation was 25 to 30 and I'm every month hitting 75. So you had haters, you know, oh, he gets special leads or this or that. Um, and, and that's fine. You know, I can only control what I control. And, um, but, but I was always, I was, but people wanted to hate me, but they couldn't cause I was, I was nice. Like, yeah. you know, I would, uh, if you wanted tips, I gave them to you. You know, I, I always said, you know, people like, Hey, can they come listen to you? Sure. So when they hired agents, you know, that I would come in and, uh, Transact opened an office in Fort Myers and they, they paid for me to go down there and train uh, their Medicare department uh, when I was there as an agent. You know, I wasn't a you know, supervisor. I was just an agent. And I actually went there and, and dialed the same leads in them and I, and for a week and showed them that it can be done. And um, so I was just really cool with, with everybody there. So they didn't like kick me off when, uh, when I said, you know, I, I, I'm leaving, you know, and they said, okay, well, go ahead and go back to your desk and, and Really, what they did is they called corporate, like trying to maybe throw them more money or whatever. So mm -hmm. they, they they took me in the office and they go, "Hey, is this a money thing? Like, listen, we'll pay you an extra thirty grand if you do this or that." And I was like, "It's really not about that, you know. It's more about I have to try this. It's just in me at this point. Like, I have to go figure this out." And to their credit, man, like they really the people I talked to really respected that, and they said, "Okay, we get that." you know, uh, and if, of course, and most people that leave come back, you know, if, cause it doesn't work out, you know, most people fail, most businesses fail. Right. And so, yeah, that was the first week of June. I incorporated June 12th, uh, 2012, my agency. Um, and, uh, and then it was just me and, uh, my cousin who was selling life insurance, my cousin-in-law, uh, who's selling life insurance at the time. I was like, Hey, do you want to come over and, 
help me sell. And uh, yeah, we started selling. Um, I couldn't sell Mutual Mahal for like a year because of my, my, my release with, uh, with uh, Transact, which I respected and, and understood. I didn't know any of that stuff. Again, I didn't know what FMO or release was. Right. <laughs> so like, um, I have to give Health Plan 1 a lot of credit. They helped me a lot early on as far as I use them as my upline. And uh, those guys are great people. They um, really helped me out with back, you know, with just leads too. Um, I didn't know how, to, I didn't know where to go to buy leads or generate leads. And Health Plan 1, if you guys are familiar with them, great company. And they're an aggregator. Um, and, and they were selling leads at the time. And they had the idea of a downline business at the time. And so uh, it would kind of, they knew who I was because they were selling a lot of leads to Transact and Transact would brag about me. So they kind of knew my name. So I actually in, ran into them and kind of just, I didn't know who they were, but God told me like, get, get in front of them and get their mm -hmm. business card. And I called them and they go, listen, we can't talk to you. You know, we have a relationship with Transact. So we can't talk to you or whatever, uh, unless you don't work there anymore. So, and that was like six months later. And then I, I called them and I was like, Hey, <laughs> um, you know, I left, you know, and, and, uh, so they're like, okay, well, well, here's how a downline works. You know, you got to get licensed and, and they really helped me out a lot with that. Um, yeah. And so, uh, I started and, um, that's how I kind of got started and it was senior healthcare direct at first and it still is. Um, and then I just hired, you know, I went from me and my, my cousin and, uh, cousin-in-law, great dude, his name's Jorge. And, um, and then it went to like me and then the people who had also left Transact would hit me up you know, four or five months when they were on their own, maybe they weren't having success. The longer I was open, I already had a reputation kind of around the area. Mm -hmm. And so like the longer I was open, some of the more phone calls I would get, like, you're figuring this out. <laughs> Can I yeah. come work with you? And I was like, sure. So I kind of grew and then, um, and then, you know, went to four agents and then I was eight agents for, for a few, a couple, three, I think three years. I was, I was eight really good agents consistently, like eight agents. And, and then I started selling personally less and less. Um, yeah. And that's, that's how I got into the, into the business. Wow. I mean, you know, that, that's, that's amazing. You know, I think not everybody's going to have the guts like that to walk away from something that's, you know, a good job. You know, it's a good paying job. It's supporting your family. You got, you, you know, you got kids, you got little kids. Um, not everybody's going to have the courage is the word I'd like to use to kind of walk away from something like that, to kind of pursue, pursue something that you feel is much bigger. You know, I think that's, speaks a lot about your character, you know? Nice. Um, and yeah, I mean, health plan one is, you know, we, I, I know we, you know, we bought leads from health plan one for, for years, you know, and they were, they've always been a top notch organization. So that's, that's cool to hear that you worked with them early on. Um, when what, what, the first thing I think about you when I, when I do think about you is probably your YouTube channel, <laughs> mainly because that's how I discovered you. You know, that's how I first heard about you. When I, when, in my, my early years in the business, I think, you know, the main two people that I were, knew about that did a lot of YouTube content was yourself and Christopher Westfall. Um, what inspired you or gave you the idea to kind of start that YouTube channel? Because it's, it's, it's been very helpful for a lot of people. It's gotten very popular. Talk about the YouTube channel for a second. Uh, so first, I want to give a shout out to Chris. Uh, Chris and I, man, we got to meet, meet each other um, on a lot of the carrier trips. And that's really cool when you become a top producer. Um, obviously, the environment right now is a little bit different, but normally you get to go on mm -hmm. five or six trips a year. And uh, I've met some of my really best, like my best friends in life on these trips. I mean, I've, I'm good friends with Chris Westfall and his wife, Nicole. They're, they're really good people. Um, you know, on a personal level, you know, they're just good, good hearted people. And, and I think Chris, uh, has helped a lot of agents. Um, and then, you know, the Conkles, uh, David and Danielle who own Boomer Benefits. Um, David's one of the smartest people I've ever been in a room with. Uh, Danielle is too. And, and, uh, they're both really nice. Danielle is just the nicest person in the world. Um, she's just amazing. If you guys are familiar with them and if you follow anything online, you know, Boomer Benefits kills it. Mm -hmm. Um, one of my best friend, probably right, other than my brothers, Jagger Esh and, uh, and, and David Haas who own Medicare FAQ. I mean, we talk daily. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, he's, he's one of my really good friends we met on the trip. And, uh, so I encourage you guys, as you guys sell, you know, meet friends in the industry. Cause I think one of the reasons that we hit off so well, there's only so many people that can relate to working 10, 11 hours a day and being, you have to be obsessed with this business, uh, all of it, you know, and, 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 and for those of you guys that are just learning the sales aspect, which is very important, it's just the tip. You know, there's marketing, there's training, there's uh, just tons of really, and where I'm at now, you're talking about private equity groups and acquisitions and stuff. Like there's just so much stuff that you get to learn. 
And um, so to answer your question is uh, with YouTube. So I have to give um, one of my best friends is uh, Nick Ferguson, and, and he sweat equity with me when I first started. And uh, he did a lot of my licensing paperwork, um, a lot of the stuff to allow me to sell. I'm, I'm always a big fan when somebody's starting an agency. Your first hire should always be admin, not another salesperson. Right. Uh, because allow you to sell. You know, that's where, uh, because if you're good at sale, at sales, you know, your, your next, every, the further you get from you, the hires that you hire aren't going to be as good as you at sales typically. Because mm -hmm. most people that evolve for, as selling this and they open up their own business, you know, it's, it's because they're really, the first niche is they're really good at selling this product. So if you can make money, then you can invest that money and grow. And so I, I always, when I talk to agents that are like, okay, Bob, I'm, who, I'm going to, I'm going to hire three agents. And I'm like, okay, great. Um, do you have an admin person? No. Okay. So why do you want to be the one doing payroll, licensing, paperwork, contracting, paperwork, appointments, yeah. all this stuff, hire, hire someone for 15 bucks an hour to do all that stuff so you can sell more. And then once you're rolling and you got that, that person doing it, then hire two more agents or whatever that is. So my buddy was like, and if you guys see my earlier videos, man, they, you know, it, it, they're awful. <laughs> you know I mean? Like it's, but it was on. my buddy holding up, a, <laughs> it was my buddy holding up an iPhone. And, you know, he would hear me on the phone. He's like, you know, you know what really, it was, he kind of used a, a hairstylist or a barber as an example. He said, you know, Bob, you know what sucks about you, man? There's only 10 hours a day you can dial because I dial all the different uh, area codes uh, or different states. And he said, man, you're kind of like a barber, man. You're, the, you're a great barber, but your income's limited because you can only handle one person at a time. So That's he a said- great point. Yeah. He's like, you, you need to sell to the masses. Like, you know, if you could, if only you could do that, it was not a lead generation or credibility play. It was, you know, can I, um, can I put my pitches and sell to more, more than one person at a time? And, uh, and that was really him. And he, you know, and, and, you know, you see me wearing like a three piece vest, you know, I was finding myself in that, you know, I didn't know, you know, uh, YouTube was still, I don't think it was new 10 years ago, but it wasn't like what it is now. You know, it, it, it just wasn't the content monster that it is. Um, or like, you know, now like, you know, Gary Vee, who I, I'm sure you follow, right? I mean, yes. yeah, you know, of Gary Vee will sit here in a hoodie and a hat and say, fuck, 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 fuck. And I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, I can be me? Oh, yes. You know what I mean? Like, not on YouTube to my consumers, but like in an environment like this and, sure. and with, um, with the Medicare monsters that I'm working on with Brock, Brock, which helps agents. I can just, you know, be me and, 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 and do yourself. So, you know, that evolved and it was just more about selling to more people on YouTube. Um, it was funny because I came home and, you know, uh, my, one of the best things he did for me is he would never let me watch the video until he posted it. <laughs> and I didn't know the password to take it down. Like, uh, because, you know, you watch yourself on video. It's weird. You know, you're not going to like it. I'm sure you, if you go back and watch stuff, you're like, you know, especially early on, you know, we all yeah. have put your, you're putting yourself out there, you know? And uh, my wife, I, it kind of started off as, you know, my wife, you know, kind of, I remember her friend, she had a friend, Jessica, one time, she's an attorney that my wife's friends with, and, and uh, they went to school together, and, and I showed her, and, and she thought it was just hilarious, like, she's like, yeah. Medicare Bob, you know, because that kind of, uh, you know, I think I started, hi, I'm Robert Bache, you can call me Medicare Bob, like, just stupid <laughs> stuff, um, and uh, so it was kind of, a, you know, I got laughed at and stuff, and uh, even when I started going on these trips, um, you know, you know, people are like, oh, Medicare Bob, and they're like, it really, uh, it stuck, you know, and, uh, and I, I've even seen it evolve, you know, I mean, you know, in, in sports, they call it coaching tree, you know, Belichick has a coaching mm -hmm. tree and part sells and, and I like seeing young people, you know, like even, you know, Brock, who I are good friends with and, you know, Medicare guru, that's awesome. Good for you, man. Brand yourself, bet on yourself, brand yourself and, uh, and rock that out. And, um, so it started with me wanting to sell to more than one person at a time. And, uh, it really evolved because then it became, as I got better and I started automating processes now, like when I would call a lead, I would dial a lead and then an automated email would go out and it would send them to that, you know, those videos. And, um, and that way, if I, if, if I left a message, I would reference, Hey, I'm sending you an email with some free educational videos, kind of like a value prop yeah. and kind of like a funnel before funnels existed. Right. And, uh, it helped, you know, it, for whatever reason it built credibility. Um, and then, I got on TV here locally, um, Universal, remember Universal Healthcare? Yeah. They got in trouble with the FBI. They got shut of down. Of course. <laughs> and, uh, so that happened on an Easter Sunday, which happened to be the 30th of April, I think that year, or it was like the last day of the month. And they got shut down um, on a Friday. So there was that weekend. That, uh, and then May 1st, I think it was a Monday. 
And so, you know, I called the news station. I go, listen, we got a problem because there's gonna be a lot of, a lot of seniors that are gonna be thrown onto Medicare and only Medicare, uh, starting Monday. Mm -hmm. And, um, so they put me on the news and my agents, I think I had about six or seven agents at the time. And, and, uh, I got, I was on the news, you know, two different wow. stories and, 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 and that, you know, all that's good, you know, cool stuff. And we got free leads, had a great weekend and we helped a lot of people, you know, because we, in Florida, especially if I think you mentioned, uh, when we were talking off air, you lived in this area, advantage yeah. plans are very good here in Pinellas mm -hmm. County, Hillsborough County. And so, um, you know, we, we were able to help a lot of people because, you know, advantage plans can only start the first of the month. So if you throw somebody on just Medicare with no drug plan, May 1st, they got, they can't start a drug plan or another Medicare Advantage plan, even if they have an SCP until June 1st. Well, that's a right. month. Tell a diabetic that they can't get their insulin for a month. Yeah. It's 9-11. Exactly. So it was, uh, so that like Medicare Bob was on TV there kind of. And, um, it's so like, yeah, it just kind of evolved into selling more people, you know, and, and, and then it also evolved to building credibility. Um, and also I know you asked about YouTube, but Medicare Bob kind of evolved with that. And, when I hire agents, one of the, one of the biggest um, obstacles an agent has on the phone is confidence. And yeah. so uh, I always joke when I hire someone, I go, I tell them, I'm so arrogant that you will not be able to, you'll, you'll have so much confidence. It won't even be funny. Like you won't be able <laughs> to not be confident. And um, so kind of like my agents, my, some of them really anchor on Medicare Bob to give them that push. Like, listen, I work with Medicare Bob's office, you know, um, you know, you saw his video, like, you know, to where like maybe you and I that are selling, we don't need that to lean on because we have the confidence already. Mm -hmm. But some, you know, if, if you have you, if some agents and some people that struggle with that, you know, and so it's really kind of helped them. And, uh, you know, people listen, it, there's some clients, I mean, that's corny. I go, good. I tell agents, tell them it's corny and, and laugh, you know, and, and then yeah. you got a, somebody laughing with you on the phone, you know, and, and, and that's a good thing. So yeah, that's a long answer to kind of how it happened. My buddy held up an iPhone and then, uh, I started doing it and it's evolved to, you know, we have a studio now and I think our videos are probably getting better and stuff. <laughs> but yeah. I, the one thing I'll say is I've never written down a video. So they're all just me talking. Wow. So like I've, and it's all one take. Like if That's you notice awesome. my videos aren't edited. So like, it's not like if you've ever watched them, it's, you know, you see some videos and like Medicare supplement plan in, and then somebody might mess up and then, their mouth is closed and they pick back up where they want the content to be good. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've never, I just, it's those videos. Like when I'm explaining plan in, I mean, that's how I explain plan in on the phone. It just comes out of my mouth. Like it's not like, and most of the times I'll literally sit down and say, okay, what are we going to talk about today? Okay. This I'm like, all right, dude, just press play. Let's go. And I'll just do it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I just, it's cause I went to the a uh, couple of years ago, I went to this consumer electronics show in Vegas. And I don't know if you guys know this or not, but there's, part of that is not just the speakers and the cars and stuff like that and the virtual reality stuff, which is dope, but it's also, they have one for media. So Disney's there talking, Amazon's there talking, everybody's there and it's in a separate area, but it's still part of the event. And one of my takeaways from that, and I think this was about two and a half years ago was content, content. It might've been four years ago now. Time just goes by fast, but my yeah. takeaway from that event, if I show you the notes is content, 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 <laughs> just content. People yeah. just want content, period. Whether Absolutely. it sucks or it's good, content. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and I can relate to that a lot too because like when we first started doing the podcast, the, if, if, if anybody goes back and listens to the first couple episodes we did because we started doing it in like mid-2018 and the episodes sound real safe, you know, real scripted, kind of boring, you know, and then as, you know, like I, I had somebody, you know, because uh, a lot of consumers listen to the podcast and we had somebody reach out to us um, wanting to do a plan with us and they were turning 65 and they were like, they binged like 60 episodes in a couple wow. of days. And they were like, they were like, I noticed your confidence got, um, you know, larger as the episodes went on. I kind of saw your personality come out more the farther I went into the show. And, you know, we started doing the exact same thing because we, we used to try to plan the videos out. We found out that the best episodes that we could do of the podcast is where, you know, we come up with a topic and I'm just going to sit there and riff about it for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, you know? Yeah. Um, well, and you came into your own, you know I mean? That's it's, it's, it's evolves, you know? And, and so that's, I give you a lot of credit for that. It's, it's like an agent when they're selling on the phone and you know, they get, they get a sale and they yeah. get another and they get another sale. Like they're going to get more confident in their ability and, and who they are as a salesperson. Same thing with you as with your podcast. It's, you know, and my videos, you're going to get better at it the more you do it. So here's a couple like takeaways that I've learned in my life. Fail fast. 
um, don't plan, just do. I know it sounds awful, but just do it. Yeah. Uh, fail fast and just do it. Um, failure is financing your education. That's powerful. So, yeah. So, uh, that is the, I live by that. Like I, I could have made, I could have kept way more money in the last 10 years and I, and I do fine, but I, but, but yeah. I am, it's evolved to, okay, I'm buying leads. Okay. Let me generate leads. Okay. Let me spend money on Facebook. See how that goes. Great. Okay. Let me try Google. Let me do Bing. And, and, um, and I've learned it all myself. So it's very expensive. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, it's also, I love it. And, uh, and I, as an entrepreneur, you know, I, the things I've learned with marketing on Facebook, Google, and Bing, if Medicare, well, we'll talk later about where Medicare I think is going to go and stuff, but if Medicare will whatever, go away or get too competitive or whatever it is, I'll apply it to life insurance or apply it to whatever. Because if you, once you learn how to market online, digital marketing, it applies to anything. And, um, so failure is financing your education. That's really powerful. I like that. Um, let me, let me, let me shift gears on the YouTube channel real quickly, um, to this. So one thing that I've always thought was really good about the good YouTube channels like yours, like Boomer Benefits, like, like West Falls channel. Um, I think the really good ones, you know, a person can have a question about Medicare. They can search it and, you know, a Medicare Bob video is going to pop up. Um, how do you feel, you know, your videos have you know, lessen the confusion for people on Medicare? Because a huge portion of the people that will hear this will be, you know, consumers. You know, there'll be some agents, some consumers, kind of a mixture. But, but for the consumers that might be listening to this, how do you think, you know, watching a video ahead of time when they're six months away from their 65th birthday can benefit them? I've, I've found that it's benefited them tremendously, but I wanted to get your take on that. So I think one of the reasons that I've had success in selling this product is, um, you know, my brother joked, that I'm not that smart. So take your chance was, you know, I did move around a lot in elementary school. So, you know, there's a lot of, you know, I'm not a great reader. You know, I, I don't like, I, I read business stuff and I, and I do videos and, and uh, stuff like that. But like, I'm not someone who, um, I'm, my vocabulary is not honest. It's not great <laughs> to be honest with you. Like my wife's way smarter than I am. I always say as far as that stuff goes. Um, but I think I do have a skill, which is I take something that's complicated and I simplify it. Um, because I always say like, I'm not that smart. So if I can figure it out, then I can relay it to somebody to where it should make sense just about for everybody. Cause if it can make sense sure. to me, it can make sense to you. And so, you know, I think that, um, the way, you know, I've always said this, everybody, seniors are very smart and the digital age and, you know, Westfall has great videos. Boomer benefits has great videos. There's, uh, um, I forget his I'm, uh, there's a couple other people that have really good videos and the videos are good. Um, and, and if you watch those videos, you'll learn a lot. And, uh, and I think that these people are doing, a, and I always tell everybody, you know, you're not the only, so I, I was helping a really big call center and I won't name them, but, um, they paid me a consultant fee and I'm helping them with their scripting and what they do is they're huge. Okay. One of the biggest guys that we're talking about and they focus on Medigap for a very long time. And now they're most big call centers are growing MA. Mm -hmm. Um, and so what they do is they, on their Medicare supplement leads that they deem a Medicare supplement lead, it gets routed to a Medicare supplement agent. Um, and that agent only doesn't present like their, their scripting is not great because, um, it, the, we're dealing with a more educated consumer now. And so if you don't talk about Medicare advantage or like, let's say you're only selling Medicare advantage. Well, I think that you're, and you're not even talking about Medicare supplement. I think that there's there's a trust issue because that person knows something about a supplement. And you're not even talking about it. And same thing. If you're, if you only sell Medicare supplements and you don't even talk about advantage, I think that consumer feels like you're not telling them something. Yeah. And so I'm working on their scripting because with my agents, we offer both and we have a nice educational presentation. It's a T chart and we educate on both and we try to problem solve and help the person pick the right plan, not shove a product down their throat. Um, but this other company can do both. They just do transfers for MA, but so I was working with them because even when they transfer, the, the, those transfers don't convert, which they should. Because if the guy couldn't, if the agent couldn't sell Medicare SUP and the transfer Medicare Advantage, in theory, that should be an easy sale. But the issue was they weren't even talking about Medicare Advantage on that first call at all. And um, which you can compliantly do, by the way, as long as it's not plan specifics, okay? Right. Or right. compliance police attack me. Like you can do generalization. <laughs> I can explain what a Medicare Advantage plan is to somebody. What I can't do is go into, if on an outbound call, I'll talk about push Humana Gold Plus or right. Aetna Coventry, whatever. 
Um, but I can say, hey, Medicare Advantage plan is not a supplement. It's a Medicare alternative. You know, I can talk about what it is. And so I think that um, the consumer is a more educated consumer because of videos, because of the direct mail content's gotten way better over the last five years compared to what it was 15 years ago. And just yeah. the volume of it has gotten way more. Um, you know, so I think the videos are good. I, I will share with you, in my opinion, I think what the videos do are a couple things. Um, if you watch the watch time, a lot of times, I think what it does for us is builds credibility when our agents, you know, it, it does generate some call-ins. So it is a lead generation tool. I think most of the consumers that, you know, not most, but a lot of them don't watch the whole video, but they're gonna be like, okay, this guy knows what he's talking about. Let me call him. Yeah. Because at the yeah. end of the day, I don't know anything about cars. I'm not the manliest of men, guys. I'm, and just, I just don't. I don't know cars. I'm, I'm right there with you. <laughs> I, I'm the guy that takes my car to the dealership that I bought it from and gets um, taken advantage of every time. And, and <laughs> Me just, too. I, I don't know. And so, and when I go and the guy, the mechanic, guy or girl, starts telling me what's wrong with my car, I want to somewhat feel like I know what he's saying. But more importantly, I'm judging two things. One, do you know what you're talking about? Mm -hmm. And more importantly, can I trust you to an extent? Yeah. Right. Like, cause at the end of the day, car people are going to be car people, but, but do I, can I trust you? And do you know what you're doing? And if I establish those two things, then you're going to get my business. And I feel it's the same way with a consumer, especially on phone sales. Um, and I think the videos helps my agency, um, gain trust. Same reason why I have shopper approved as a third party, uh, referral source that we get rated on, you know, we're a plus rated better business bureau. Same reason why the Inc 5,000 credibility and trust and, um, you know, and, and I, we do know what we're talking about and we will help you and we will service you and we, you know, we're going to take good care of you. But I think the videos, um, same thing for, you know, boomer benefits and, 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 you know, and I'll say, I think they, I know Westfall, um, probably does, just gets way more leads than I do off, off YouTube. And, and he does a great job, man. I mean, he presents senior savings network just so good. And, but I give him credit too. And just like you and I, his stuff has evolved, you know, uh, more of his personality has come across some of his yeah. political views, some of his other stuff has come across. And um, it's probably more fun for him to do it that way, even if it costs him a sale or, or something, you know? Yeah. Um, he, he, you know, he's probably thinking, maybe I'm not the right agent for everybody, but I'm, if I'm the right agent for you, call me. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. But I think it helps with credibility. Um, I, I do believe people are trying to do trust and do you know what you're talking about? And also people don't like to read, really. I mean, online, you know, that's why YouTube exists and uh, Instagram's pictures and yeah. uh, Facebook's videos, you know what I mean? It's mostly content and I'm not saying people, some people read, but most people try, go sit down as a senior and go read medicare.gov for two hours. Like, <laughs> like I mean, it's, it's boring. Trying. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think, I think that's a great point, you know, and I think, I think, you know, a lot of people are, are trying to, trying to get the information just enough to where they know that you know what you're talking about, but also to where they feel like they can make a good decision. And, um, I talk about, Let's shift gears to this for a second. Um, let's talk about the future of Medicare. Where do you see Medicare going in the next decade? As we enter the, the, the 2020s, you know, a lot's changed, of course. Like you said, you know, the, the seniors, I think, are more um, adept to understanding digital things more than ever before. They're on the internet. They understand social media. Where do you see Medicare going in the next 10 years? So I think Medicare as the program, now again, with COVID-19, all these stimulus packages we're pack, uh, pushing out, all the money we're printing. You know, I, I don't know, you know, I'm going to assume Medicare. I'm also going to look at the platform on the market where there's really smart private equity people and they're all buying in 14 times multiples of the companies. So yeah. I would say that, so the next 10 years, people feel pretty secure that Medicare as we know, it's going to be there, right? So, so using that assumption, okay, um, is I think what's going to shift is and it's already happening is how people are going to buy Medicare supplement, Medicare advantage plans um, and the product they're choosing. So we're already seeing uh, Medicare advantage gaining market share every single year. We're seeing Medicare advantage deregulated on how it's marketed. Uh, we have a Republican Senate. So that's, that's yeah. partly why um, not, I'm not being political, but typically Medicare advantage, uh, it's a private alternative, right? So just very baseline, not p political affiliations, but typically Medicare advantage when you have a Republican in office, uh, and it's in a Senate, it's going to have uh, rich benefits and funding. And then typically when a democratic Senate or Congress, and, and then you have it defunded. So that's why when Bush was in office, you know, you had, uh, and he had, he had his Senate, 
you know, the, Repu the Medicare Advantage funds were very rich. And then uh, when Obama took over and Obamacare took some funding from them, you know, Medicare Advantage kind of, you know, the max out of pockets went up, some of the benefits went away. Um, so right now we're seeing Medicare Advantage plans kind of all starting to look alike uh, because the, benef the, ri the benefits are so rich, um, you know, with Advantage. And so I, I, and I think that uh, baby boomers, you know, the other thing is who's retiring now, you know, people that were retiring 10, 15 years ago, um, you know, they maybe had better insurance when they were working. Uh, benefits were better. They were used to bet really good coverage. Um, and I think that uh, 65 that's retiring right now is probably used to having a $5,000, $10,000 deductible on a health plan, um, some co-pays. They're used to a network. Um, they've also changed their insurance every couple of years. You know, it used to be most people had Blue Cross for their group plan for their entire life. Now, you know, I talk about supplement, company, supplement companies or advantage companies with a consumer and I'll bring up Cigna and they go, oh yeah, I think I had that five years ago. Yeah. And my group went to Aetna and then they went to Blue Cross. Like, so I think, um, again, kind of going back to the more educated, but also used to change. Um, but so I, th I, think, I think you're going to see more and more Medicare Advantage enrollments continue to grow. I think you're going to see Hispanic population and uh, lower income demographics. Not that they're the same one, but just Advantage products seem to, to be very good fits with them. Um, I think how people buy Medicare supplement and Advantage plans, I can tell you the big guys are working on and already have it, self-enrollment tools. Um, not just the carriers, like, you know, Mutual Mall has their own, I'm sure you know this, they have their own self-enrollment URL that you still get paid for. Yeah. Uh, but you market yeah. that URL and the customer can sign up themselves. Uh, what you're going to see at our level on the dis distribution channel, we're making those same things uh, and we're making them for all the plans. You know, I, we have a URL that someone can go in, put in their doctors, put in their meds and shop four different Medicare Advantage plans and sign up all by themselves without ever talking to an agent. Wow. And, yeah. And we're going to see that same thing with Medicare supplement plans. You know, I think you're going to see, um, we're going to see a universal e-app. You know, we've already seen that with Medicare Advantage with Sunfire and yeah. another company. Connection. Um, who is it? Uh, Connection. Connection. Yep. Yeah. Um, we're already see so on the Medicare Advantage, there's already the, the all-in-one enrollment platforms. You're going to see self-enrollment. Medicare supplements, I know CSG is working on one, and I'm sure these other guys are going to come out with an all-in-one platform for Medigap app. Um, and so what that's going to do is, people are going to be able to go shop for a plan and just self enroll. Uh, that's already happening. Um, my Medicare is already kind of that portal for people on Medicare part D and advantage. Um, you know, consumers can go buy a Medicare advantage plan by themselves on Medicare.gov. They can with a drug plan. Um, everything that we're seeing though, as far as, as an agent, there's still a need for us. It's still a financial tool. Um, and, and all the studies and everything that, that, that come out show that people still want that, that little nod. Most people, but, but you are going to have a percentage of people, um, you know, that are more comfortable. Listen, if you have a plan G when you turn 65, by the time you're 75 years old, you might've changed that plan two or three times. You might get used to just send me the link and I'll shop it and I'll fill out the health questions and everything and just get it done. Now there's some right. DOI issues with the apps because uh, the departments of insurance have to approve the Medigap apps and stuff like that. But I, I think how people enroll is going to change. I think Medicare Advantage is still going to gain more. I think it's going to gain more and more market share. Um, over the next 10 years. So our, we have a huge plan. I mean, in our, our three to th five year plan, we, we have it marked in that Medicare Advantage is going to continue to gain market growth. Now we're one of the few call centers that we're both growing Medicare Advantage and MedSup. Some of the bigger guys are struggling right now. They don't understand why their Medigap is plateauing or going down and their MA is skyrocketing. Their goal is to do both. Um, now we're smaller than these guys. So maybe that's one reason. Medigap's more competition as well because it's easier to – less barrier of entry to get into it as an agent to sell it. You can cold call and generate leads yeah. for Medigap. Um, you know, there's, uh, there's no real regulation on how to sell Medigap because I guess whatever reason, maybe they figure worst case someone has a full coverage plan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, worst case scenario. <laughs> yeah, uh, so that's what I think, you know, and, and we'll see. And maybe if Biden wins, we have a, a Medicare for all situation. I, I wouldn't be surprised, especially with right now – So. I, I know what we're seeing with the COVID-19 is we're seeing a lot of 66, 67, 68 year olds um, getting their part B now because they were maybe thinking about working for another year, 18 months, but with yeah. everything that's going on, they're like, you know what? I'm just going to take my Medicare. I wouldn't be surprised. I think um, going on an economical thing, not to get too much, but I, I think we're going to have a really high unemployment rate. I, I don't think that's going to be fixed super, super quick. I think that um, what you're going to see is uh, younger people are going to get jobs quicker, but people 55 to 64, I think their unemployment is going to have struggle for the next couple of years. Yeah. So I think what the government might do to compensate for that is lower the Medicare age to 60 or 55. 
that would be fantastic for us as far oh, as I'm absolutely. concerned. Absolutely. Yeah, me too. Me At too. least an opt in program for people at 55. You know, I, I think that'd be great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, so I think, uh, I think Medicare age might change, um, but that's just me maybe being hopeful. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think we're going to still have good market growth for, for both programs. Um, and uh, I think it's a great business to be in. Um, I do think how people enroll online over the phone is continuing to grow, especially right now. Um, and then on self enrollments and stuff like that, I think it's going to continue to evolve on how they buy it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I agree completely. And I think, you know, um, I'm completely on the same page with you on the Medicare Advantage side of things because, you know, we're, I mean, from, from my standpoint, I kind of compare it to where, you know, when I, when I first got into the business, i I got in, in 2014. Um, and it seemed to me anyway, you know, back then advantage plans, you know, the ancillary benefits were still to be, you know, being implemented into the plans quite a bit. And, you know, we saw, we saw some plans that had, you know, a lot of dental vision hearing, let's say, for example, but it was more rare than it would be today. I, I, I kind of feel like the benefits have increased every year instead of decreased. Um, we're seeing more funding kind of come into it. I just kind of feel like the trend is going to kind of keep going that way as far as strengthening that program. Um, and yeah, it'll be interesting to kind of see how it, how, how it shapes out. And oh, Uber and Lyft. Doing. I mean, yeah. Uber and Lyft, have you heard of, I mean, they're, they're, and I actually, I don't disagree with this. I, I, so, you know, some Humana and some other Advantage plans have, have included uh, some transportation, yeah. one way transportation, whatever, like, you know, six trips a year or whatever it is. But if you ever sold this stuff and you have customers that have used that, yeah. let me tell you what that really looks like. <laughs> Someone needs cataract surgery, so they can't drive. So maybe they're an able body, you know, not even old, say they're 69, right? Mm -hmm. Which is not old. I mean, 69 year olds now are... I just went for a run on a causeway and there's 69 olds out there running. I mean, yeah, you know, it, yeah. they're, they're young and vibrant. Um, and, uh, but they need cataract surgery and, and maybe they're single or their spouse might even still be working. I mean, people work, you know, so they need a ride to go uh, to cataract surgery and they look, oh, their plan covers a ride. Well, let me tell you what that looks like. They get picked up at eight o'clock AM. They get thrown in the van with 15 other people. <laughs> they get drove three hours to go to finally the doctor's office. They get there at nine 30 and their procedure may not even be till two o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> do it and then they got to wait till everybody else in that van's finished so like they're gone from 7 30 a.m when they get picked up they're not getting home till nine o'clock at night meanwhile traveling after getting a procedure is probably not the most comfortable thing to do yeah um, so an argument that lyft and uber has is uh hey just give them a monthly budget of 200 dollars a month and they, they can use it for whatever they want if they want to go and use the gym membership that's included in the plan we're arguing that it helps their health um if they want to use it to go to the grocery store they want to use it to go, uh, if they happen to have a doctor's appointment, access to care. Uber and Lyft's argument is access to care. You know, this 82-year-old person maybe can't get to the doctor's office and they don't feel well. We'll give them an Uber budget. Yeah. Put it on their app. Boom. They get picked up and they go. Um, I think that'd be great. I mean, yeah, and, so do I. And, and, but to your point, yeah, we're seeing that. And as long as the funding continues to go um, towards those programs, you know, you're going to see out-of-pocket costs, you know, continue to be pretty, pretty not okay. And, uh, and you're going to see those nice ancillary products, over-the-counter benefit, um, you know, rides and, and stuff, dental vision, hearing stuff like that. So let me, let me, let me. I think this is a good transition into my next question here. Um, over the phone, you know, people purchasing Medicare plans over the phone, agents selling Medicare plans over the phone. Um, yeah, do obviously, it. you know, not possible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. A year ago, and probably as recently even as a year ago, there were a lot of people in the industry that saying it can't be done or it's unethical or whatever, all these things that, you, you know, that we've heard over the years. You know? um, I think, what, what, what would you say to those kind of people for someone that's been thriving in it, in that model for, for such a long period of time? I mean, what is your response to people that still kind of have that approach? You know, listen, I respect everybody's opinion, but, you know, the reality is reality. And um, I'll just share with you. So these top producer trips, you know, they're usually $200,000 or whatever to, of premium to qualify. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even kidding. Seven years ago, you know, there might have been Westfall, me, uh, Jagger, uh, who else met FAQ, you know, the Conkles. Like, there's a handful of us that are phone people, okay? And, um, and we even bring some of our agents that qualify too, because our agents are writing that much, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, um, and so there'd be a group of us and that's maybe why we all became such good friends because at first 
I don't want to say alienated, but um, yeah, a little bit. Like people are like, you guys are cheating, you know, or, <laughs> uh, you know, like uh, you guys, there's no way you can help a customer as good as us. And I was younger and, and, and more willing to argue back then. I mean, I've been in hot tubs, plastered, and just arguing with people from, you know, I remember one guy, what am I going to say? Great guy and good producer still does really well. And he's like, man, y'all never going to last, you know, face to face and this and that. And, and, um, and I think there's room for both to answer your question. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so first I'll answer your, you know, but, but my point is seven years ago, there was a handful of us fast forward every single year. There's more and more people that are selling over the phone, qualifying for those events than face to face. And, um, the last couple of years, I mean, it's at least half and half, you know, and, um, mm -hmm. and mind you, a lot of local agents that qualify, they're flipping their book to make a trip. You know, all of us are mainly doing new production to qualify on the phones. And so, um, you know, I think there's room for both kind of piggyback what I was saying earlier. I think the way people buy insurance is Medicare is going to change. Um, I can tell you with what's going on with COVID-19, um, you know, I actually called Justin Brock, Medicare guru, about six weeks ago. And Brock and I talk weekly, usually. Um, usually sometimes about business, sometimes about family, sometimes I don't even know what we're talking about. <laughs> and, um, and, but usually on a drive home, you know, I have people that I'll call, I'm sure, you know, there's people you call on the way home or something when you sure. have to drive yeah. and just check in on. And, um, and I was calling him and, and we had just went remote, our office. And, uh, and I said, man, this is, the situation is interesting, you know? And, uh, and I said, and, and I go, I think I, I was, I have a financial background from mortgage banking and stuff like that. So I was like, I'm really concerned unemployment's going to be really high. And I was like, you know, we were just talking and, and I, he had a Medicare guru group. I've always kind of stayed, you know, away from that kind of stuff. You know, I'll contribute sometimes if, if I'm by the pool or whatever, and somebody says something, you know, you know, I'll comment, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, I'm not an, I just, I didn't, you know, I just had kind of, I didn't want to put myself out there necessarily. Cause I, I'm just, I just didn't, I don't know. I didn't want to do it. But sure. then I didn't think there was a need for it, I guess. You know, that, all that stuff's already out there. You have Westfall. You want to learn how to sell by phone. He'll teach you. He's good at it. You know, Brock's doing it. He's good at it. Pick your poison. Buy both programs, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and take both, you know, out of bat. that. Take the best out of both. Um, so, uh, but I called him. I was like, man, I feel really bad. I mean, there's going to be a lot of people that are unemployed. And we were just talking. And I was like, you know, there's nobody with a 215 license that should be unemployed. Yeah. Nobody. Yeah, I, I agree. Because you can sell over the phone. Yeah. And so, you know, so I said, and Brock was like, man, you know, I was like, you know, maybe, you know, dude, maybe I'll make a training video or whatever. And, um, and, uh, and we'll post it on, 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 you know, your, your thing or whatever. And he's like, well, let's do this. You know, and then we're like, well, if I just post one video though, you know, how invested am I going to be in it? You know what I mean? And I'm just being honest. It, I'll contribute sometimes when it's free, just because I like it or I'm bored or not bored, but I have some, you know, 15 yeah. minutes just kind of scroll through and type, but so Brock and I came together and we did this thing, Medicare Monsters, and it's to help people that are already licensed to, to learn how to sell Medicare by phone. And it's been going really, really well, man. I mean, it's, it's really cool. And it's really interesting for me because I do a lot of the same trainings with my agents, but my agents are all LOAs. So meaning they don't, they don't have to buy leads. They get paid an hourly plus bonus. You know, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a job and they're good at it and they're great. I have good agents. Um, all can get better, but they're good, good people and I love working with them just different talking to these entrepreneur people, you know, that have to buy their own leads <laughs> and, yeah. and they're really digging into this stuff. It's just a human nature. You know, if someone's about to go spend $500 tomorrow on leads, you know, they're watching these trainings and, and we do accountability calls twice a week and they're asking good questions and really trying to get good at this. And it's just really cool for me. Uh, I'm getting so much out of it and we charge a little bit of money for it or whatever, but it's only because if we weren't monetizing it, then, I hate to say it, Brock and I, it's like a new shiny toy. Like we would have liked, oh, this is fun. But then like something else would come up. Right. You know, like I'm about to hire 30 more agents here in about three weeks of my, in my office. So it's like, but by, by charging for what we're doing, like I'm still going to make sure I'm doing enough value to that, to the group. And it's, yeah. it's, I don't know how long we're going to do it for or whatever, but it's going really well. And, um, selling by phone. So I'll answer it. Can we do a good job? I would argue that we do as good a job or better job than anybody else. I mean, our client's process is very simple. Now, there's different ways to sell by phone. You know, there's people that cold call. There's Filipinos that transfer. You're buying shared leads. You're doing whatever. And all those are effective ways that people can make money. At the end of the day, they're helping people. But our customer experience is very simple. We didn't buy the lead. They went to our website. Now, I might have drove them there paying to get them there. But they filled out a form on our website to talk mm -hmm. to us. 
So it's not like I'm cold calling. My agents aren't cold calling or, you know, I'm not. So not trying to steal business from local agents. If you're, if you're servicing your customer, they wouldn't be looking online. Right. <laughs> um, you know, there, there's already, so I'm just fulfilling a need. You know, these people need help. It, it, so, you know, and uh, so uh, they go online, they fill out a form. One of our agents calls them, that lead gets assigned. They call them, they help with a plan. After they sign up for a plan, we help once that we, we track their app for the customer. My new business team calls the customer, does an approval phone call, helps them cancel whatever insurance they currently have. We do a Part D review every year in October. We do a Medigap annual review every year. I mean, I, we help with claims. We help with issues. We help yeah. them sign up for Part B if they need it. I mean, I, I, don't, you know, I, I, I don't know how we could do a better. I, I would love my mom. if she, I try to build a business. Our, our uh, mission statement is to be referable. You know, I, I think that kind of sums up. If you're doing a good job, yeah. you're referable. And so I would, you know, if my mom was turning 65, I would like for her to work with a company like ours that's going to, you know, do a really good job. I and mean, we're sales driven, but, but the cool thing is, is like, there's actually two offices almost. There's a service office and a sales office. So we're very sales driven, outbound, do it. But then it's very hold handing. My support staff is 10 people and eight of them are on Medicare. <laughs> like and, right. they're, like awesome. and they're all licensed agents and you know and they they love our support staff you know what i mean and and it, yeah. and they are very patient with them and and they have a great time with them and it, and it's very expensive for me to have that support staff but I, I you know you spend so much money getting a customer i think you should invest in keeping it i yeah i i agree completely i mean you know our 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 our, our organization's not to the level your guys is of course but you know we have we have two gals in our office and their entire job is to take care of the clients, you know, yep. whatever they need, claims, questions, you know, whatever, what, get on the phone with them and the carrier to help, you know, put out a fire. And, and, and I love hearing that too, because there's so many, you know, um, agents out there that, that they forget about that part of it. You know, they forget about um, keeping the client happy and satisfied and, you know, just making sure it's the best thing for them long term, you know. They're just so focused on the, the, the I mean, run, you know? Yeah. I mean, but when you're at our level, man, I mean, our, our cost per acquisition, it takes us two and a half years just to break even on yeah. a customer, you know? So I need that customer to stay on. And why would you not do an annual review? I mean, now, right. mind you, I am a top rated agent with all the carriers. We don't flip our book. I mean, annual review, if a rate goes up $6, the customer is not going to change. Okay. But, right. uh, but if, you know, if somebody messes up and the customer gets a $22 rate increase or something like that, or they've had, you know, three $10 rate increases every year and it adds up or Ascendo comes out with a 14% household discount, you know I mean? Yeah. We do a really good job for our clients. And I think local agents do too. And I love working with local agents, you know, and, um, you know, and I've worked with on that group um, and I've, I help other organ FMO organizations train um, local agents right now. I mean, I, Listen, I'm talking to really big box people um, right now, you know, guys that are buying these people for a billion dollars, half a billion, stuff like that. They just invested in all these organizations that have, you know, 100,000 local agents, but no phone presence. So these guys need help. Yeah. And so I built a train cor training course for them to help them sell by phone because I want them to be able to do it. And what's funny when I talk to local agents is a lot of them are already doing the hard part. Uh, they're, already, they're already generating a lead somehow, whatever, yeah. however that is. And they're calling out. But their close is set an appointment. <laughs> so yeah. a lot of them, it's just skip that and do the appointment there. Like, mm -hmm. don't ask permission. Like, let's just, let's, let's, you know, and, and I think with COVID-19, you know, if anyone's watching this, you're with your, I don't know what your broker community mix is, but um, I would encourage you to learn how to sell by phone because listen, our Florida governor is talking right now about what's going on. But like, I don't think until there's a vaccine, you know, I could tell you right now, my parents, they're not having someone come in their house that they don't know in October, <laughs> like, yeah. or for, for any reason, you know? So, so if I was a local agent, I would really try to gobble up how to sell this by phone. Um, because I think that, you know, I, I think it's, this is even going to move that swing quicker to people buying over the phone and online. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. I mean, you know, I, I was just thinking about this the other day and I was reading an article that said that things couldn't, things might not be back to completely normal pre COVID-19 for another 12 to 18 months. And I was like, wow. Until there's a vaccine, like, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, if you're a six, for us, dude, you know, I think if there's going to be phases. And I think before the economy's sake, not that we have to go off on what, what we think is going to happen, but they're eventually going to have to do phases and open up the economy because at some point it's going to be like, listen, we, we have to. I mean, people are losing their jobs, unemployment, you know, you're going to have 50 million people unemployed, murder, suicides are happening. Like, let's figure this out. Yeah. But 
whatever that phase four is or whatever that is before we have a vaccine, it's still going to advise seniors to only go out when they have to. Yeah. Facts. Until there's a vaccine, if you're an at-risk person, only go out when you have to. So, you know, for, if I can shop my supplement plan online, then I don't have to go out or have somebody come to my house. And, I, and now there's still going to be some people who have a great relationship with their, with their customers and they're going to be able to go in. And, but I'm talking about drumming up new business. Go right. try door knock. If your way of a local agent was, was door knocking, and that's effective. You knock on a thousand doors, you get in 10 homes, you sell four policies, you cross sell and you can make money. Yeah. Grind. Lo I love that. Respect. Um, but try that in October because you're going <laughs> to knock on a thousand doors. And I don't think you're going to get in the same amount that you would have um, last year. So yeah. uh, you know, not that it's dead, but I, I would encourage people to really invest. And it's not, there's a process to it. And if you, if you can learn it, if you learn how to sell face to face, you can learn how to sell over the phone. And, um, and you might even like it better afterwards, or you can add it to your business. You know, I give Brock a lot of credit. You know, his dad has a very, his dad had a very successful agency. It's something I really, you know, we call Brock a second generation guy, right? Like, cause, uh, he's, he's second generation, you know, his dad started the agency and, um, and there's a lot of second generation people that just chill, you know, service their dad's book, uh, or mom's book and, uh, and make money. Um, I know what his business was before. I know what it is now. And he's 10 X that thing. Yeah. And, um, and it's because the dude grinds and he has some political views that nobody agrees with or sometimes he comes across whatever, but, um, but the dude grinds and, uh, and I have a ton of respect for that. And, and, um, and he evolved is what I'm trying to say. Like, you know, he could have just been happy. They have a storefront that they've had forever. They have billboards they have forever. They have commercials they have forever. He could have just honestly chilled and done pretty well, but he evolved, you know, he taught himself yeah. Facebook marketing. He taught himself how to sell over the phone and, <laughs> It's so easy. Brock can do it, right? So that means anybody can do it. And no, I'm just, kidding. <laughs> um, but it's very doable. And 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 um, I don't think face to face agents are going to go away to answer your question forever. But I, um, but I think it's going to continue to move the and swing towards uh, online self enrollment. And I mean, look at Medicare. Now they're asking you to create a My Medicare account. Yeah. Oh, that was a that was a big change. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And, it, and so ten, imagine ten years of that. Yeah. So, for, 10 years from now, when that was created to 10 years now, if you yeah. imagine somebody who 65 right now creates that account, they went online, they put in their own drugs. They've watched videos online from everybody else. They figure out they want a Medicare advantage. They put in their prescriptions. They sort it by lowest prescription cost. They check out the top three plans. There's a little enroll now button <laughs> and they <laughs> enroll. Once they do that once and then they do it twice, like in over the next 10 to 20 years, um, you know, I, 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 now I don't think that's going to replace the agent in 10 years. I'm just saying it's going to continue to evolve. Yeah. It's going to be probably a pro uh, progression. Um, and, and, um, going back to Justin for a second there, you Justin being a second generation, me and him kind of clicked when I first, uh, kind of, you know, talked to him because I'm a second generation too. Oh, okay. Um, you know, my dad was in the business for 25 years before I came in and he had a really successful agency locally here. And, he was a, you know, he was like a top, he was number one or number two producer for our local Blue Cross company here in Utah for probably 10 consecutive years. Awesome. Um, and so, you know, me and him really connected on that because, you know, my, him, it's that from, from what it sounds like, you know, Justin's dad had built it, you know, real, you know, mailings, TV commercials, all these things. Um, my dad had kind of had a similar business model, um, you know, and I came in and I wanted to do, you know, social media. I wanted to do podcasting. I wanted to do the YouTube channel and everything like that. And, and there, and you know, there, there was, um, there Christian. was some pushback. <laughs> yeah. Don't There's reinvent some... the wheel, son. Just do what I'm doing. You'll be very successful. Exactly. You know? <laughs> so you know, kudos and... to you guys. Listen, you guys took a leap too. You know what I mean? I mean, I mean, you know, I, anybody, you know, successful people doesn't just happen, right? It's a lot of hard work regardless. And, um, and for you guys, you know, I'm sure you're, I can, I have a dad and, and my dad was successful in mortgage banking business. And, you know, I'm sure he's, I'm sure now it was a different uh, industry. So I, I didn't have those conversations then, but, but yeah. with you guys, I'm being in the same industry. I know, I know, you know, this is my first time really meeting you, but I, I've had those conversations with Brock and he's just like, yeah, you know, my dad, uh, my dad uh, really wanted, you know, I have to push my dad over the cliff sometimes to get yeah. him to go with me. And it was funny because I actually met his dad before I met him. Really? So, yeah. So I think you know Galen Hendricks, right? You of know course. Galen? Yeah. yeah. I love her. So Galen's my mom, man. She's uh, 
I love Galen. Um, she's also on one of my people I talk to all the time and, and she's really helped me as well just as a human. Uh, she's yeah. just a great person. And, um, so it's funny because, uh, she had a, she has a golf event every year. And so I was there and, um, and I've got, you know, you get partnered with three other people and there's this guy, Bobby Brock or whatever. And, um, and Bobby had heard that I was Medicare Bob from his son. And so I played 18 holes with his dad and I swear to God, um, his dad was so proud of his son, which he should be. And he just kept saying, yeah. man, you two would hit it off. You two would hit it off. I'm just being nice. You know I mean? I'm like, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Have him. Oh man. I, you know, how do you do that online? Oh man. My son, you got, he's trying to learn that too, man. You guys would hit off. I'm like, yeah, dude, that's cool, man. Yeah. No, have him. You know, I'm trying to play golf. I mean, yeah, man, you know, he's, and yeah. we have a good time. We're get, he's a drinker. I'm a drinker. We're having a good time. And I'm like, yeah, no, have your son hit me up. You know, I get my phone number or whatever. I don't think uh, he hit me up. But then the next year, Justin came to that event. It was in Galen's office. And um, I flew in there with Jagger and, and, uh, and, ja and a couple of people were there. And I never met Justin yet, never heard of him. And I really liked him right off the bat. I mean, he was cool. And um, we were both learning a lot of the same stuff at the same time. So good conversa conversations that, like, you know, you don't get to have. All the, you know, when someone else is learning Facebook, you get to have, well, what are you trying? I mean, I'm doing this. Is that working for you? Oh, yeah. yeah, that kind of sucked, right? Okay. Oh, wait, that worked? Man, okay, I got go. to <laughs> that. And so, like, him and I just hit it off pretty good there. And then, you know, he's um, uh, just, you know, and I, th I, I give him credit. He puts himself out there, and he's got a good heart, and he wants to help people. And, and he's making money doing it, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, you know, people that if you can't invest in, in, in yourself, you know, again, for same thing with him. you got to monetize it to make it worth his time. Otherwise, he needs to go spend time making money on something else. Right. I right. give him I mean both you guys, great job for taking what you guys, what your dad's built and putting gasoline on it and growing it. Cause both of you guys could have just chilled. I'm sure your, your dads would have been just fine with you collecting. Yeah. Yeah, probably so. Um, I mean, you know, Justin's just a good dude. He's just a good dude. And, 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 and I've learned a ton from him in the last year. I've kind of gotten to know him a little bit and, um, you know, I mean, but yeah, I mean, you know, I think Justin, you know, I mean, he's kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm following and I'm trying to follow in his footsteps. You know, I'm trying to do every, you know, I'm trying to do what he's doing and, um, what he's done is amazing. You know, that's a compliment. And you know, you just, you touched on something, you know, you met him a year ago. He's a good dude. Here's the really cool thing about this industry. And, and, and I've taught, and, and I, apparently I don't know, I've never done final expense, but some of the agents that I'm talking to in the Medicare, uh, monsters group that Justin and I are doing are final expense guys that are coming over to Medicare. And, Apparently, like it's a little bit more cutthroat in final expense. Now, I don't know that. That's just from people I've talked to. Mm -hmm. Coolest thing about this industry, like, there's some really cool people, man. Like, I've never. This yeah. is our first conversation. Like, and if I see you, man, we're gonna hang out. Like, sure. You know, yeah. I mean, it's there's just so many. Now, I it does make sense. It's it's a lot of Type A personalities. Um, and then I think when it comes to competition, at the end of the day, I think we all know there's not enough insurance agents to service every single person that needs Medicare. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like you know I've. I mean, Jagger is literally my best friend and his office is across the street from mine, literally. <laughs> and he markets nationwide. I market nationwide. And I don't think we've ever generated the same lead. That's inc that's <laughs> and we crazy. both do that's six incredible. or 7,000 policies a year. Um, you know, occasionally you run into a couple people, but like same thing with Boomer Benefits. I don't think I've ever really ran into a Danielle, you know, Boomer Benefits, you know, person. You know what I mean? Very rarely is my point. And so like yeah. that just shows you that there's just so much business out there, but I just think it's cool. I think there's a lot of cool people in this industry and uh, I'm excited. And there's a lot of best practice sharing. I mean, I wouldn't be where, I, where I'm at without Richard Cantu, Galen Hendricks, you know, Jagger, uh, David Haas, um, uh, some other people that, you know, are on a round table. I mean, Richard Cantu sold gold Medigap, you know, to eHealth and, you know, I would be around him a couple of times and, you know, he was always really nice, but like, you know, you kind of, you know, certain people you're like, do I approach? Like, you know, and yeah. also like, and then yeah. what do you ask about? Cause like, you know, you don't want to be too pushy, but at the same time, it's like, got to take your shot because he's very successful. So let me see what I can learn from him. And then you go and you talk and it's like, man, this guy's going through the same stuff I'm going through. That's awesome. And then, you know, how do you come over that? And, um, and then, yeah, so it's just really cool. This industry is really cool with the people in it. hundred percent, hundred percent. It's small. Um, <laughs> it's very, yeah. very small. <laughs> like everybody kind of like, once you get to a certain level, like you, you know, you know, like you kind of know, you start to get to know everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, I think there's so many people on Medicare. There's so many people getting onto Medicare in the next 10, 15 years. I mean, there, and there's, and to put into perspective how few agents there are per 
you know, people on Medicare. I mean, you know, we're all necessary. Um, I agree. But so shouldn't, that's, maybe that's why it's not so cutthroat because like, you know, it's like, dude, go get your money, bro. You know, yeah. and go help people. I always tell everybody, you know, you obviously get into business to make money. Like, you know I mean? Yeah, yeah, I got kids, I got a wife, you know, I, I want to have a nice lifestyle. But I think the reason I've been so successful is I'm, you know, I'm also a pretty good person, I think. And like, I like helping people. And yeah. to sell a, one of the reasons I think I loved this so much was, <laughs> you know, you sell a product and they're thanking you and mailing you gifts because you really helped them. You know, and, and I mean, I, I remember one of the first times I had a client mail me a gift. I still have it on my fireplace. Um, what's that really expensive? Like crystals? Uh, it's Not the sure. swan. Sh- 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 whoever's watching this will know if. Yeah. And so basically it's like a, a crystal uh, clover, leaf, uh, like a four leaf clover. Oh, and she's wow. like, you were my lucky, my lucky person or something. It was my lucky day <laughs> meeting you. And she mailed it to me. And I think I was doing the job for like two weeks. And I was like, oh my God, okay, this is cool. Yeah. You know, like helping people and getting and making money doing it is a uh, cliche. And I know it sounds, you know, but it's, it really is a great feeling to be able to do that. For sure. For sure. Like, you know, last year, my wife and I had our first kid. Um, uh-huh, so, well, welcome. Your life you. just started. <laughs> I know, seriously. <laughs> but, you know, she's going to turn a year old in a couple of weeks here. But I remember when she was first born, I had this idea. I'm like, let's, let's send a mailing out to all the clients with a picture of her. Um, and I was like, you know, I want them to feel included in this moment. And so we did that. Um, and we started getting tons of like handmade gifts and things yeah. like that, like baby bibs. And I was just blown away by it. You know, it's just, I mean, when, when, when you, when you work with the clients and you get to, you know, know them a little bit and, you know, it, it, it really kind of, you know, it, it was touching for me, you know, because they didn't have to do that, you know, and it wasn't, you know, we didn't send it out to get gifts back or anything like that. But like, it was just a cool feeling. You know, it was a cool feeling. It was like a, a feeling of appreciation. And, and they just want to love, man. People, I think people want to love in general, man, you know, and, you know, baby, you probably got hand knitted, hand, um, you know, knitted uh, yeah. caps, stuff like, you know, pajamas or whatever. I mean, and that's, All yeah, kinds of it's stuff. Just, I would encourage anyone who's, you know, if you're not in the industry, I would get into it. I mean, it's such a fulfilling industry and Medicare is still just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, mm-hmm. the license is such a great license to have, um, you know, but I love Medicare and until I, you know, I, I just love it. I just think it's, you're, you're problem solving, you're helping people and um, you do have a lifestyle that is, is nice and doesn't cost the customer anything. I mean, it's already built in. Like how many times do we hear on the phone? Well, what does your service cost? And it's funny because I can yeah, tell how the they're time. asking that. <laughs> it, I, I can tell how they're asking it. If they feel like, like some of them are like, I want to pay you, <laughs> you know, like you've done such a good job. What, what, what's the, I'll pay you 200 bucks, you know? And I'm like, no, no, there's no, there's no fee. And they go, well, how do you guys get paid? And I do this and it's built in by the insurance. So if consumers are listening, it's built in. If you call Mutual Omaha, you get the same price as you do working with us. You know what I mean? You call Cigna, it's the same price. Like they can't change the price. Um, now, are you paying for us? Yes, because it's ultimately built into that price, but it's, it's, you can't get around that. Like it's, even if you go directly to the, the carrier, it's going to be the same price. See, coming from the mortgage world, very different. Like that's one of the things I liked about the MedSups was the mortgage world is very rate, very rate sensitive. Like, you know, you're doing a refi, you might lose a deal because another bank down the road will do it for a quarter point less, you know, yeah. and they will. They'll do, it's all about how much money do you want to make or how much you think you can make on the loan and can you sneak in garbage fees and stuff like that. Medicare supplements, it's like the price is the price. So when I got, when I, th- I went through my training and the guy told me, I was like, well, can they call mutual mom and get a better price direct or whatever? And they're like, no. I was like, so, so okay. <laughs> they can't get a better price than working with me. So all I have to do is, so they're not deciding if they're going to buy this. They're deciding if they're going to buy this from me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can do that because I'm going to help them. I'm going to be nice and I'll be there if they need help. So cool. Yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, it's almost like, um, unbelievable. You know, when you get into the business and you're just like, you know, I mean, it's, it's the best, you know, because you work with great people. I mean, seniors are some seniors are the best people to work with. You know, they're, they're, they're loyal customers. You know, if you do a good job for them, they're going to love you forever. They Um, refer you like like crazy. And you know, there's, there's, there's different stages of referral and the targets to have an advocate and ad. So referral is, sorry to interrupt you. Oh no, you're you're fine. But, you know, a referral, to your point, they're the best customer. They, they will refer you if you help them the right way. And, you know, a referral is good. You know, a referral is 
uh, oh, you're going on Medicare. Hey, you got to call my guy, Medicare Bob. You know, he's really good. Mm -hmm. An advocate for you is that next level referral, meaning, you know, oh, you're going on Medicare? No, 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 no. let's go. We're going to go call. I mean, I've had clients call me with their friend. Bob, Bob, listen, you got to talk to Sam. <laughs> Sam's about to sign up for this. Can you believe it? I'm like, well, that, maybe that's not a bad option for Sam. No, Bob, I got this. Well, that's what was right for you. Let me talk to Sam. <laughs> Sam, talk to Bob. You know, and it's like, all right, you know, and, um, and, it's, and that's an, like literally a neighbor. Like I've had people more than probably 50 times in my life. I'm going to go my neighbor. I'm like, what? Like put the phone down. And they literally go grab their neighbor. And it's like, <laughs> cool. And my favorite thing is a golden girl house. You ever had one of those? Uh. And a golden girl house over the phone. What do you mean? What do you mean by golden girl? Six sales out of one house. Oh, oh. I don't think so I've ever like, had one of those. You have like, so uh, I had one in my life. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I'm still friends with them to this day. And I could tell you their names. I won't, but they're in Arizona. And uh, there's two sisters. And they, they're, they're married. And then there's a friend that lives with them. And they're, and they're married. And two of them are ex-cops. And they're, wow. they're all in motorcycle gangs. Like, not a gang, but like a motorcycle. <laughs> you know, like a group. Club. I think it's a church motorcycle group. So, um, but it was hilarious. I just called, you know, the, it, and they went online and it was one person and um, her name's Anne, her first name. And I'm talking to her and, and, and literally like it was, it was just, Oh yeah, you have a husband too. Okay, cool. Yeah. Here's, I can help you guys. And then like I enrolled them. They go, all right, hang on. Let me get my sister. I'm like, <laughs> and I didn't have, it was just, and then, and then, you know, the sister, I didn't even have to pitch. It was just like, get me whatever my sister got. Um, cause, uh, one was older, but they were retiring. So she was turning 65, like in four months. And then the husband, it was just awesome. And, uh, and I was just like, you know, and then, um, and I've had also twin sisters before, uh, living in a trailer and I've had one tell me, tell my sister advantage plans suck. No, <laughs> tell my sister supplements suck. <laughs> and so it was really cool because I actually ended up selling the opposite of what they first said to the one once they understood it. Cause yeah. Here's my biggest pet peeve, you know, um, is I don't want people to be sold a plan. You know, I want them to choose a plan and I'm a big fan of educating them. Now I control the call, you know, sales process. I have a way to get them there. I still drive the car. Okay. Because otherwise I'm not helping them. You know, the worst thing you could do as a tell a phone, any agent, whether you're on the phone or in person, but it, it's pretty, it's easier in person, but on the phone, you don't like I'll hear agents and they're talking to somebody, they're 45 minutes into a pitch and they have two screens open and they have a huge, uh, a Medicare advantage on one screen and a plan G on the other. I'm like, you have wasted that person's 45 <laughs> minutes of their life. Like, you know, I get a commitment from the person within eight minutes. Are you a Medicare advantage person or a sub person? Right. Right. And cause once you pick that, psh, I got you. Like yeah. if you're an advantage plan person, all right, are you network focused or benefit focused? Let's go down those paths. Are you, if you're a supplement person, cool. Here's G, here's N, here's the companies, here's the best price. Let's go with this. Yeah. Sound good. Let's, you know, so, um, but yeah, no, it's very rewarding uh, to, to do this stuff. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, I've always said that I think 75% of the difficulty for people is narrowing down Medicare Advantage or Medicare Supplement, which way I, you want to go. I agree. And that's 75% of the difficulty for people. I think if people I think it's higher than 75. I think it's really the only choice. Yeah. Yeah. Because once you choose because again, as you look at the advantage plans, they're all starting to look alike. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I mean, the funding, they're all getting the same amount of money. You know what I mean? Like the, the big guys yeah. are all looking alike. It just comes yeah. down to is your doctor in the network. Right. Um, you know, or a five dollar difference in a specialist copay. I mean, who cares? Right. Um, and then when it comes to med stuff, it's uh, you know, here's FG and N. You know, yeah. Which, which you know, which one do you want? Your pick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Final question I got for you is, um, and I think this is a good um avenue to kind of shift into it. Medicare Advantage or Medicare Supplement? I ask every guest that's ever come on here before if you had to pick one or the other. Obviously, you know, I agree with you completely. No one size fits all. You know, it's both sides. You know, have their place and everything. But if you had to pick one or the other. Which way would you lean and why? So I'll answer the question this way. So uh, I'll answer it a couple of different ways. But the first way I'll say is this. We do a full educational pitch when someone's new to Medicare. And for us, which is an anomaly, <laughs> we're 86% of our people that we talk to choose a Medigap on an on a educational pitch. And we sell both. Yeah. So it's not like 
we're not necessarily trying to steer them one way or the other. I think a motivating factor for that is the Medigap open enrollment takeaway. You know, if I could go with an Advantage plan, let's say I'm 65 and I am healthy, and I could go with a Medicare Advantage plan for five years, and I, I know when I am unhealthy, I can upgrade, and I would get a Medicare Advantage plan because there's some cool bells and whistles in there over the counter and maybe yeah. some transportation, maybe dental vision, hearing included, free drug plan, cool. But, um, you know, I would, I would probably choose that and then upgrade to a supplement later. But because that is not allowed and because Medigap does have an open enrollment period, um, unless you're in like Florida or certain pockets of California or New York, um, you know, man, you know, I have some money. So like, to me, it's like, I always hear this. People say Medicare supplement plans are for rich people and Medicare advantage of poor people. I actually think it, I could argue it's the opposite. Yeah. I was just going to say that because, and I say this all the time to even customers, no matter what your biggest unknown cost as you get older is your healthcare. Biggest unknown cost. Right. And to me, it makes a lot of sense, especially, I'm not going to say poor, I'm going to say fixed income. Now, because I, I don't mean to sound insensitive, people have said poor people that, I'll say low income people to be correct and, and, and nice and in the right way, but, and there are LIS plans available, do eligible plans, Medicare Advantage, for sure, go with that. But so I'm talking about the people that are on a fixed income that might, you know, might make 1800 bucks a month or 1500 bucks a month. They're not rich, um, but they're on a fixed income. Maybe they got a, a pension paying a little bit you know, whatever, but say they're on a fixed income or they're lower income, but they're not dual eligible, but they're lower on the income side. You know, they're, you know, I would argue that their biggest, they're on a fixed income. Their biggest unknown cost is their healthcare. So I see the value on paying a hundred bucks a month to make that a fixed cost. Right. Right. You know, I, I, I think I have clients that most seniors, let's say they make 1800 bucks a month they know exactly where that $1,800 a month is allocated for every month. And in a lot of my clients and a lot of seniors, like around Christmas time, like they're doing certain things, like they'll do without in September and October so that they can do good Christmas for the grandkids and stuff like that. And that's why I just love these people. But, but uh, most of the time they have a fixed income and you know, they go with a Medicare advantage, man. It's really hard for them to come up with 300 bucks a day for a three day hospital. So that's $900. Yeah. That's, that's almost, you know, that's half what they make. And you could say, oh, I'm just not going to pay it. These people don't think that way. That's not how they want to live. They don't want right. someone calling them and, and trying to get them to pay that bill. They don't want those past due notices in the mail for a year and that debt getting sold and then being serviced. Again, you're going to have some, some people that don't care about that stuff and those people are whatever, but most people don't want that experience in life. It's stressful. Right. So if, you know, and, I, and then I would argue, so I would argue if you actually have a lot of money and you can get a plan that's a max out of pocket of $4,000, I would argue, you know, self-insure a little bit, you know, your max out of pocket is four grand. That's probably lower than any out of pocket you've ever had. Yeah. Right. But then, but then my other argument is if I have some money, I kind of want the flexibility to go where I want to go. Yeah. So the reality is with a supplement plan, you're paying for two things. You're paying for predictability because you know exactly what you're, you, you pick a plan G. I can tell you whether you are healthy or you get cancer next year, what your healthcare cost is going to be. It's going to be your premium times 12 plus your annual deductible, period, right? So you're paying for predictability and you're paying for flexibility. And for me, I, I, as a consumer, I think those two things are worth paying for. I yeah. will tell you as an agency owner, now we have a huge strategy, man. We, we got to grow MA. There's a huge, uh, we, we are making, we're going to make a big push over the next 18 months. And when I say that, let me say it this way. On Google and Bing, you know, I don't generate Medicare Advantage keywords currently. So that's when I say I don't have initiative for, which also might be why we're so heavy on Medigap, okay? Because we generate Medigap terms, you know? So you're probably going to close those guys, Medigap. I'm also a firm believer, though, most people that are looking for something online, they don't really know the difference. Right, um, right. So, that's so true. You know, a lot of these really smart call centers, they have these agent profiles, they have this lead profile that gets graded before it even gets distributed to a lead. I don't believe in that because I've sold this product and that's the other thing. I think I have a lot of respect in the industry and I don't mean this disrespect to any of the call centers, but like I own it and I've done it. You know what I mean? Like I've done it. Like I, when I hire an agent, I've done this. I can tell you, you are going to have some great days, some bad days. You're going to have great calls, bad calls. You can do everything right and they don't buy. You can do everything wrong. And if you just ask somehow they buy, you could be saving somebody $5 on a supplement 
on their other one and they're going to buy, uh, they're going to buy from you and you can be saving somebody $80 a month and they don't. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like just, those, those things happen. Okay. So I think I have a lot of respect for that. So, but I will tell you as an eight, so we are having an initiative for MA and I do, and I, and I do think it's a good product for the right person, you know, do eligibles and even people that are, you know, there's some people who say, you know what, Bob, I see the value in that 120 bucks a month. I just can't pay it. Or I'm eating cat food. Okay, cool. That's the thing to your point. Sorry that and I get excited about this. There's no bad no. choice. There's no bad choice to answer your question. Like at the end of the day, if a client has a Medicare advantage or they get a Medicare supplement, there is a 95% chance that either of those options are better coverage than they've ever had in their life. Yeah. hundred percent. I mean, but for us, so I'll tell you this though, as an agency owner, so, not, so, so th that's my message to the consumer. The reason it's such a hard choice is it's not a bad choice. Okay. So it's either, do you see the value in paying for flexibility and predictability and slash, or can you afford it or can you not? Okay. If you can't, don't feel like a second class citizen because advantage plans are, you know, they're good. Like you're not gonna have a problem. You know, there's some hurt, you know, there's, okay, you got to get a prior authorization. Well, I have an HMO now. I have to get that now. I, yeah. When I go get something removed off my back or something, I got to go get my primary to do that. So a lot of these baby boomers are conditioned for that. And that's also why they're choosing MA because they're more educated and conditioned for that product. Um, but, but, but to answer your now as an agency owner, so if I'm someone who's trying to sell by phone and maybe I'm adding one admin person and two more agents, um, I will tell you MA, it, it can be complicated because, so we have 25,000 clients or something like that. And um, you know, about, cause it, during annual enrollment, our percentage of MA enrollments in Medigap is, is a little bit higher, like 60, 40 to where out of it, it's about 85% Medigap. But anyways, so we have about 15% of our book of business is MA per people. And I don't mean this in a bad way, but 90% of our customer service goes towards those, that 15%. Yeah. hundred percent. And it's because my doctor's out of network. Um, I, I have a new drug and now it's expensive. You didn't tell me it was going to cost this much, or you didn't tell me I was going to pay $300 a day, even though obviously we did. Right. But they forget. Right. Um, all they hear is zero premium or whatever. And so, um, so, uh, I, I guess that's a very long winded answer, man. As a, as a consumer, I buy meds up <laughs> and probably as a small agency owner, um, I would, uh, start with meds up, but then when you get to where I'm trying to scale from, you know, 35 to I'm trying to get to 60 and to 80 people, you know, I'm, I, I need to add MA in, in, into my marketing efforts and, and as a focus. Sure. Sure. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, we sell both. Um, we probably sell, you know, and our, our, if I had to guess, our book of business is probably 60% MA and okay. it's a customer. I mean, it's exactly like you say, you know, I mean, it's the customer service legwork is so much greater than that of our 40% percent of our, of our book that's meds up, you know, it's not even close. Um, and every single person I've, I've brought on here that I've asked that question, I think we've had probably 20 people on for guests. I think I've only had one or two people say, answer that question with Medicare Advantage. Almost everybody said Medi Medicare supplement. <laughs> I mean, and by the way, dear consumers, we make more money selling MA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, so first of all, with MA, we get, if you're a first timer, we get a bonus. When you're our level, we get co-op deals. Okay. So my marketing, I get marketing overrides. So like I'll partner with an MA company and they'll say, hey, here's a hundred grand you're obligated to bring me this amount of clients. Cool. But I don't have any marketing costs for that because they're paying for it. Okay. So there's an incentive to, for us to push MA. Uh, there's also lifetime renewals on MA compared to um, typically six years of full comp renewals on med sub. So, you know, it, it's not a business decision because so many clients, you know, leads that you're talking to like, well, you're only selling because they, they think that because they're paying more for a sub, they think we get paid more for it. Mm hmm. And so they're like, so, you know, they're like, well, are you steering me towards that? Cause you make more now if you, that's, you know, hopefully you don't hear that a whole lot because in your presentation, you should be building credibility and trust mm -hmm. throughout it. But you know, I get it. I, I, I would think that if I have to pay more, maybe it's cause you're going to make more. Um, but yeah, no agents make more typically on med advantage. So it's not, it, but again, I still go back to like, you know, you have 60% MA that in my head, I'm not thinking, man, Kristen's doing a bad job. You know, no, right? in my <laughs> yeah. head, it's like, you know, Christian's presenting both. And that's also where you market. You know, I specifically, unless I need leads, I don't market in Florida. I don't mm -hmm. market in California or New York unless, so I have, I don't know if you do this. I have tier of States. So I have uh, target a target acquisition costs and uh, lead volume in each state. And so, you know, if, if it's a Thursday and leads are a little bit lighter, I might turn on New York, California, and Florida. 
Um, you know, but typically I don't run those all the time. So, right. you know, if I run four to five days a week, I'll, you'll probably see my MA shift. You know, if I run Southern California <laughs> all five days a week, you're going to see more of an MA shift. New York's going to be high deductible F and M or high deductible G and a MA shift. But yeah, to the consumer, there's really no bad answer. And to the brokers, that doesn't surprise me because I can just tell you, man, you don't get complaints about the product. I mean, people really yeah. like their meds up. Definitely. Definitely. I can't, I can't remember who said it. It was somebody, somebody that was, is pretty big in the industry. I can't even remember who it is, but I think they said, um, you can't screw up a med sub for somebody. Can't. You know, and with the Medicare Advantage, on the other hand, you know, people can enroll in an Advantage plan that their doctor's not in, that, you know, might not, and there might be a, this problem or that problem, but um, can't screw up a med sub. Um, real quickly, Talk about your agency. If anybody listened to this podcast up until this point, got all the way to the end, and, <laughs> and, and, they, and you know, something you said resonated with them, um, how can they get in touch with, with um, your organization? Yep. So uh, consumers, you, know, it's, you can Google Medicare Bob, and, um, and we show up everywhere. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, it's Senior Healthcare Direct. Uh, you know, if you Google Medicare Bob, that's probably the easiest way than me plugging in the phone number. Um, but yeah, and, uh, you know, my encourage the consumer is work with a broker, you know, don't call a carrier direct. Um, because you know, if, if you call even, you know, let's say you want a Medicare advantage and you call one carrier, you know, they're only going to present you that one product, um, to where if you call Christian or us or a lot of these other great agencies that we're talking about, you know, they're going to be able to really tr troubleshoot for you and, and the value add is they're going to get you the right plan. It doesn't cost you anything to work with a broker. So uh, I would love, you know, obviously I'd love to work with, with anyone. Um, but my biggest, uh, I guess, plug to the consumer would be work with a broker, whether it's face-to-face, -face, over the phone, either way, work with a broker. It doesn't cost you anything. You're going to get education for free. You're going to get more options for free. And you're going to get, hopefully, and if you work with a lot of the companies we talked about today, you're going to get good customer service for free. And then as far as agents that are listening to this, um, you can do this. Okay. This is a great industry. It is not a get rich quick scheme. Okay. It is not, you know, you see, if you guys follow you know, me or something like my lifestyle now is very different than it was eight years ago. Um, the first two years I opened the business was the worst two years of my marriage <laughs> because I was working all the time and, uh, and it took that. And, um, and it took some friends sitting me down and saying, dude, you're going to lose your family if you don't get your butt home. Um, so, you know, be prepared to, to, to get in, but if you get obsessed with this business, um, you know, selling, learning the product knowledge, learning how to sell it, learning the marketing side of it, learning compliance, um, then learning how to grow and scale and talking about cost per acquisition and figuring all this stuff out. Like you're going to challenge yourself every day and you're going to get better every day at it. And so that would be just, you know, work with, uh, you know, stay at it. Cause I know it's very, very hard, man. It's very, very hard. And um, it, you know, just, but, but it's a great business to be in and, and it gets easier month 25. It just does, you know, it yeah. just does. And then if you are currently someone who, um, wants to learn how to sell by phone, um, you know, you can go to Facebook and look up Medicare monsters and, um, you have, uh, myself and Brock and I have the same training that I give to my agents on, I have scripting, underwriting guides, how to complete applications and all this type of stuff on, uh, we do two accountability calls a week with you. And, um, and it's, it, it's so far, it's been really cool. You know, it's just been a really good time. Well, great. I mean, that's awesome. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to do this today and spending so much time with me on here. I really, really appreciate it. And I know you're a really busy person. So I, 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 a hundred percent, you know, um, value your time and, and, and again, just thank you. This was great. Cool, man. It was great uh, talking. I guess I didn't realize I did not. I think we said we we're going to go like 30 minutes. I did not mean yeah. to go this long. So I apologize if it's long, too long. Oh, no, no, it's great. <laughs> it's great. I mean, I found that the best podcasts we do end up being the longest ones. Cool. Because, you know, they're good content. You know, when they, when, when, when something's working and something's vibing, it stretches out. So, um, cool. well, everybody, thanks so much for taking the time, spending it with us today. Um, we'll be back with you with another episode. And until next time, Take care. See ya.